Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. Solving validate binary search. A very good question for practicing binary uh, search tree questions. We're just given a root of a binary search tree and we just want to determine is it a valid binary search tree or not. And from learning data structures and algorithms, you might know that a valid binary search tree is such that we have a node like two and every every single node in the left subtree one and if it possibly had other children is going to be less than two right so one is going to be less than two and similarly every single value in the right subtree three including three's potential children's if it had any are going to be greater than two not greater or equal strictly greater and we know this is a recursive definition. So if th we had three and it had some children like five and maybe four over here, we see that it's not a binary search tree because four should be less than three. Four should be less than three, but it's not. So this is not a binary search tree. So we need to do a recursive depth first search to solve this problem. But let me show you what you might try. You might just try a simple solution like, hey, five, we have five is the root. Let's check its child. Okay, three is less than five. That's good. Okay, let's check the right child. Okay, seven is greater than five. That's good, right? Okay, let, now let's check seven because we see three it doesn't have any children that's good for us we don't have to check anything but seven has a left child it has four as a left child well that's good four is less than seven and it has a right child eight that's good eight is greater than seven so is this a binary search tree the answer is no because it's really easy to miss we have a five as the root we have a right subtree over here and we have a four in the right subtree. But we know five is not less than four. That's not true. So we need a better algorithm and it requires depth first search. We can't just check the neighbors. So our brute force approach would be for five, check every value in its left subtree, make sure that it's every value is less than five and then check every value in the right subtree, make sure five is less than every value in the right subtree. And so we would need n comparisons to do that, right? O of n. And then we'd have to repeat that process for every subtree. So seven, we got to repeat that, compare it to every potential descendant of itself, which is going to be O of n. And the time complexity of that overall is going to be O n squared. So can we do better than O of n squared? So one thing to notice is the root value can be any value, right? There's no restrictions on what the value can be because it doesn't have any parents. So we can say that it can be any value between negative infinity and positive infinity. And as long as that's the case, five is okay. We don't have to make any other comparisons. Five is between negative infinity and positive infinity. Okay, and then when we go down to the left subtree, we know five is good. We don't even have to check it anymore. But when we go down to the left subtree, what do we have to check? All we have to check is that three is less than five. So in other words, we just want to make sure three is greater than a negative infinity, which of course it is. And we're adding one more condition. We want to make sure it's less than five. So our left boundary stayed the same, but we had to update our right boundary from up here, right? And so we're done with that. And of course, we don't have any children for three and five. Of course, we don't have any children for three. So we are done checking three. Next, we want to also determine that the right subtree is a binary search tree. So we want to make sure seven is greater than five. But is there an upper boundary for seven? Like this could have been a hundred or it could have been anything. So there's no upper boundary yet. So we just need to check that seven is less than infinity, meaning that this is the right boundary and it's greater than five. 
so we had to update the left boundary over here. When we went here, we only had to update the right boundary. And this condition is true, so we are done checking seven. It is satisfied. And when we go to the right child, eight, we're gonna do the same thing. We only have to update the left boundary, so we have to make sure that eight is at least greater than seven, but it could be anything, so it's less than infinity. So that's good, eight is a binary search tree, but now we get to the value that actually breaks our binary search tree, and let's see what our algorithm does. So we know since set four is the left child of seven, it should be less than seven. Four is less than seven. We have to update the right boundary for four, but the left boundary stays the same. So we're getting the left boundary from over here. We're borrowing it from its parent because if seven is greater than five, then its left child and four is a part of the subtree, four must also be greater than five. So the left boundary is five. Now does this condition hold? It does not. Four is not between seven and five. So this value breaks our binary search tree. So therefore, this is not a binary search tree. It's false. We're returning false. And with this algorithm sense, for each node, all we're really doing is making a comparison. We're making a single or rather two comparisons. This is going to be big O of N or uh, 2N, which we know is still linear. So... We can just call it big O of N. So now it's actually time to write the algorithm and the best way to do this is recursively. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write a helper function nested inside of this helper, or inside of our original function. We'll call it valid. We know we need to pass in the node since we are gonna do this recursively and we're gonna have two boundaries, left and right boundaries. Like any binary search recursive function, if we reach a null node, we can just return. What are we going to return? We're going to return true because technically an empty binary search tree is still a binary search tree. And then we want to check, we want to make sure that node value is less than the right boundary and node value is greater than the left boundary. But we know if this is not true, if these conditions do not satisfy, then we have to return false because we found a node that broke our binary search tree. And now it's time to make our recursive call. So we want to make sure that the left subtree of node is valid so we can pass node.left. And what's going to be the boundary for these? Well, since we are going left, we can leave the left boundary the same, but we're gonna update the right boundary to the node's value because we know that a left subtree has to be less than every value. We know every value in the left subtree has to be less than the parent. And so the parent is gonna be set to the right boundary because we need, we need to make sure that this is gonna be less than that. So we wanna make sure that the left subtree is valid. We also wanna make sure that the right subtree is valid. And in this case, we're gonna do the opposite of what we just did. So the left boundary is going to be updated and the right boundary is going to stay the same because we know every value in a right subtree has to be greater than the root or the parent node, which is the left boundary. And if both of these return true, then we can return true. If they both return false, then we can return false. So what we can do is just return the result of this. So whatever this evaluates to is going to be our result. We don't really need any variables. And now we just need to call the function that we just defined valid. We'll pass in the root. We want to make sure that this is a binary search tree. Initially, the left boundary can be set to negative infinity and the right boundary can be set to positive infinity because the root value could be anything. There's no restrictions on what the root value can be. And as you can see, this is a super efficient solution, beats 97%, and it doesn't take very much code either. So I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.